we took him to live with us and he's security up at Northeast Georgia Hospital. And he said, they, they're like, they have no more beds. The COVID is so, so high right now. So everybody be careful. It's, it's definitely spiking. Yeah, my, my sister has a friend who has it and she went to the hospital and they couldn't admit her because they had no beds. So um, anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I don't know how much protection this is, but um, and, and this is the other thing I'll show you. Show you all. Uh, this is a sprayer from Dick Blix. It's for acrylic paint and I fill it up with about 70% alcohol and I just spray my hands every time. So. Oh, did Zoom go off? Did I lose everybody? You're still yeah, here. You're my uh, my screen went away. Uh, let me see if I can get if I can see you all. There you are. Okay. Anyway, just just for anybody who it's it's convenient to have, and it's not sticky like the hand sanitizers. But okay, so we're going to talk about Kathy's going to share with us everything about jumbo loans. Kathy, as I, as I mentioned, I've never worked with anybody who did a jumbo loan. And um, it's, it's funny, funnily enough, all my expensive buyers have been cash buyers. So um, don't know what that's about. But anyway, which contingency exhibit do we use? A conventional? Yep. Okay. It's just a conventional, same conventional. Um, the key is on jumbo, you don't actually see as many people, even if it's a high sales price, doing it. Um, in the past, um, if they don't have to, because a lot of loan officers will skirt them toward the conforming loan amount of the 548 250, um, even if they have to do interim financing, like the second mortgage with it, uh, because jumbo financing can have and does have guidelines that, that are a little bit stricter. Um, it's a longer process. It's not a 30-day closing usually for someone getting a jumbo loan, um, there are, um, they can put as little as 10% down, but they have to do a 10% um, second mortgage or equity line with it. So the 80% is kind of the rule of thumb on most jumbos since pandemic. Um, the, um, the credit score, the minimum credit score we have uh, on jumbo is 680. Um, and that's not going to give them a great rate. If they're above 720, actually the rates are as good as, if not better than conforming right now. Uh, but again, it's, it's, a, it's a, a very um, strenuous process. If someone's salary, you know, if they're W-2 and if they've got the money in the bank and there's no layers, it's easy. But a self-employed person they're going to have to do so much. I mean, there's profit and losses and balance sheets within 60 days of closing. There's, um, you know, CPA letters. It's just really intense on the underwriting, you know, very, very scrutinized. Why would somebody choose a jumbo loan? Well, because of the loan amount. I mean, 548, 250 is the max conforming. Um, again, we will offer jumbo if they're going above the 548, 250, we can or, uh, offer a combination loan doing the conforming and the second mortgage or the jumbo. So when you talk to a client and consult with them, you give all aspects. But I, you know, I'm very, very uh, detailed up front of like, you will be asked for more documentation. It's cross T's and dot I's twice, you know, especially for a self employed person. Um, and we go through what their scenario is. And again, you know, I just actually just closed a jumbo loan for uh, one of Peggy Connor's clients. And he had multiple companies, multiple LLCs, ones that during pandemic, he closed and opened up the other ones. It was awful. The paperwork the man had to give us, the things that we would uncover, you'd give one thing, we'd see, well, where's this LLC? Oh, yeah, I did this. Let me get that from my account. And it opened up another guideline. It was it was hard. We got it closed on time, but it was very, very hard, very difficult. And what kind of what kind of length did um, you know in her in her contract, what kind of uh, financing contingency did she put in there? And um, and and how, how far out did she put closing for that? Uh, we only did 21 days and we only did 35 days of closing. So we wow. were under, yeah, we were under the wire the whole time. That's the only way they could have gotten the contract. We just made it happen. And it was, 
it was honestly a day-to-day -day process for me with him, with my processor, with an underwriter. And fortunately, because our parent company has in-house underwriting for Jumbo too, not here in Atlanta, but, but um, uh, within, we have people, actually, she's a local underwriter, but she works for our parent company, you know, that we can talk to. So it's not like, like most mortgage companies, most bank on Jumbo, you turn in all the documents. It takes four to five days for the underwriter to get to it. Once they get to it, then you have to gather those documents. Again, turn them in four to five days before they look at those documents and tell you if you need anything else. So the process just keeps going on and on and on of waiting to see if they find something else that maybe we didn't catch to give them. The appraisals are different. So the appraisal comes in, standard regular appraiser, just like our conventional FHA appraisers. Once it comes in, there's, there's another process. Uh, it actually goes through this system that takes three to four days for it to go through the system and it rates the whole appraisal. It may calls for a second appraisal. It, I mean, and there's nothing you can do about it. The client wouldn't have to pay for it, but then we'd have to have the steps and the time to get another appraisal in and the other appraisal rated. So it is a double system on getting appraisals. You're not going to get a rush appraisal. You know, that's is, there, is there a limit on the amount of the loan for a jumbo loan? Um, no, I mean, the, I mean, the highest I think I've ever done is 2 million. Um, but no, there's, there's, there's outlets there. And a lot of the jumbo loans are brokered out too. It's someone that's, you know, that, you know, we may be delegated, it's called delegated underwriting, like we have the, the authority to underwrite it and close the loan, but it's, it's going to be immediately serviced by someone else because jumbos are just a different animal. So it may be Chase, it may be Bank of America, it may be Wells Fargo, it may be Truist, you know, it may be, you know, Chase is one of the big ones for jumbos. Uh, we have to go by their guidelines, but we do the underwriting so it's not bogged down in their system. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a different animal. And if you, have a, if you have a jumbo client, a lot of times, you know, they usually have enough down payment that they don't even go jumbo. If it's in that million range, they put enough down to stay at that 548, 250, or if it's close and say, you know, they need 648, 250, sometimes it's like, oh, let's just do the conforming, get a hundred thousand dollar equity line or second mortgage. You know, again, it's the numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, if they want that 30, I mean, the 30 year fixed rate refinance that I'm doing for a friend that's a doctor friend of mine, I mean, he just got two and seven eights on a 30 year fixed rate. He was at four and seven eights um, on his jumbo money. And, you know, it'll be a, a long process and it'll be a, a strenuous process of documentation because him and his wife and their different companies, but he's saving so much money. Um, so it's definitely worth it. You cannot have a bankruptcy or foreclosure showing on the credit report within seven years to get a jumbo. Um, so the guidelines are stricter too. Do you see them not closing or do you, is, is it just a, I mean, do they have, do they have a higher rate of not closing or do they close, but it's just a hassle? It's for us and our company, it's a hassle. I mean, I can't tell you the ratios for, from others. I could imagine that if you're going through a bank and you're not a, you know, a, a salary client and you're self-employed, I couldn't even imagine the time frame that it would take. I, I mean, I couldn't. It's probably crazy. We, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking my my husband's son had a home that he was renting out and the renters moved and he and we had just gotten married and we're looking for a place. And he was like, buy my house, buy my house. And I, I was like, no, but we did. But it took us because it was a non arm's length transaction. It took us three years to be able to close to close on that home. What? We just kept making the payments, making the payments, making the payments. But yeah, it took three years. They did not want us to buy that home. And I don't understand what that non-arms link. I don't understand why that's such a hassle. Non, yeah, why was there a problem with arm? I mean, non-arms non link could cause for a second appraisal, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that prices aren't inflated because it's non-arms link and, you know, being in, being, you know, being attached to each other, you know, are you trying to, uh, the old, the old scam 
uh, back in the day was you have someone come by a house, it's a family member to bail you out, number one. And so the bailout is one of the issues um, but you also inflate the price, the appraisers in your pocket, they get the price up, the family member refinances, pull that cash out, then the house goes in foreclosure. So there's a lot of reasons why the guidelines are, are arm's length transaction. It's like who's, who, who's attached to whom and what are they really trying to pull here? Is what they're pulling out, but I can't imagine why three years. It was back in 2000. I was a flight attendant. I had a great job with Delta, great credit, and um, it just I, I I didn't understand that. I was like, why is non arms link so bad? Because we just bought it for what he had in it. He was like, I just want to get rid of it. And so yeah. we we didn't do any of what you're talking about. I wouldn't even have known to do that. I wasn't yeah. even. I had yeah. just I I just I got my license in 2000. So I either just got my license or. I think I just got my license because I was like, no, we should buy a new house in the neighborhood where we can turn it into a rental in a year, but we didn't do that. Anyway, okay, let's go back to Jumbo. Does anybody have questions? Again, it's this that, that conventional um, finance contingency, so it's no different, but just make sure definitely on Jumbo that the lender's dates, that you know what those expectations are. So again, uh, what I'm hearing about every single loan is have your buyer talk to a lender before you go shopping for a home. So in case you need to write that contract very quickly, you've got information from the lender and you can write the, you can write the offer um, with, with integrity and with protections for your buyer. Exactly. And I was going to say too, if so, you, you have clients, particularly that have lived in other places, like I've had several jumbo loans because I live in California and everyone has a jumbo loan because you can't buy a home for less than a million dollars. So you have to have a jumbo loan. Like no one has, until you right. buy a few homes, like they come here because they have so much money now because they've got it in their homes. But, um, or even up in uh, the Northeast, other places, I mean, people have tons of jumbo loans. Like, so if you get people from other places and it wasn't in, it wasn't that hard if they have a good job and credit and everything else. Right. Uh, the self-employed, I can see why that'd be a, a lot trickier. Cause I, that's what I said to my husband. I'm like, we're never gonna be able to move now. <laughs> Um, like it'd be so hard or you had to pay cash or, you know, have a lot more down oh if you're, when you're self-employed, but when we had salaries and whatever, it went through, it was fine. We refinanced. Oh, yeah. Fine. You had the layers of COVID too. So everybody's going through 2020, you know, depending on the industry, there was a change in their industry more than likely. So then you have to back up documentation on how they really have recovered and because the rule of thumb, you're using two years of tax return on self-employed, averaging the income, and then just looking at a profit and loss year to date that justifies that they're still on track. So sometimes, especially, you know, with him, you know, as an orthopedic surgeon, you know, there wasn't a lot of surgeries, you know, during certain time frames. Um, so things like that, you, you know, you have to, you have to work through. So for, for those of us who are self-employed and um, intend to live in nice homes, that profit and loss, we, I'm hearing that, that's very important. We need yeah, to know our what you put on your taxes, you know, unless you do a bank statement loan and then you're going to get a higher rate. You know, if you tell the government that these expenses have to be taken in consideration to do your job, we can't use that income either. And um, is, is there any... Boy, my computer's going wonky today. My monitors are turning on and off. It's really weird. Um, but are there any particular, when, when you work with agents who do jumbo loans, is there any particular thing that agents can do to make it a better experience for both you and the client? Is there any- communication. I mean, again, Peggy Connors and I, you know, have worked well together for a long time and, and we're talking through the whole process. I mean, she is not gonna write a contract if I'm not on the phone with her and she doesn't know the details of what this person can or can't do in time frames, mm -hmm. um, she just, I mean, she's not, she's not going to put it in. You know, we normally, if it's a jumbo, try to get them pre underwritten as much as we can. Okay. Um, getting documents in, getting them looked at, you know, just start that vetting process as soon as they know they want to start looking. And we actually did this with the gentleman we just closed with her. So we had some of it done, but then every time we got something new, 
some new LLC or some new spin on what he's done in his business. He had very creative CPA in many businesses. So it, it got, uh, it, every time I looked at something, I'm like, well, you didn't tell us about that. Tell me about, tell me about this company and when that was formed and what that is. And yeah. So we, uh, like I said, we talk daily. And as a listing agent, uh, when you receive an offer that has a jumbo loan on it, what would you advise? Um, that's definitely something that I would talk to that loan officer, talk about how much they, what they've looked at, how far they've gotten along with them, what their normal process is, you know, confirm the expectations of what could and should be, um, you know, in the contract because every mortgage company, especially on Jumbo is going to be different. Okay. Okay. Anyone have any questions or comments? So it sounds like, um, so for a Jumbo on the, on the, the exhibit, we're just filling it in exactly the same, just with the parameters that the, the Knowing that you're gonna, Yeah, you're going to need that financing uh, contingency, the dates for the appraisal, you're going to need realistic time frames from the lender. Pam, have you been on the listing or buy side of a jumbo loan? No, I have not. Okay. I just wanted to see if there's anything you wanted to add or any questions. It's, you know, don't be afraid of them. Uh, just know that, you know, you really need to know what that lenders can take, either if you're listing or buying side, you know, what, what are the expectations with the lender? Because they're the one that's got to get this thing through. Uh, bank appraisals are conservative, uh, of course, on conforming, but they're definitely conservative on jumbo. So be careful with that. Okay. All right. Well, if, 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 one more chance. Does anybody have any questions or any comments, anything that you'd like clarification on? Then Kathy, we're going to let you go. Have a happy, happy birthday. I'm here all day. Hopefully some of you are going to come to the class today. We've got um, for those that registered to be in class, we've got uh, city barbecue boxes. So some, some good lunch too. Oh, good. I talked with my, I went to the doctor yesterday and talked with her about weight loss and she was like, limit your carbs. So uh, it's not happening today. Not um, happening. Also, there's a vision, I'm having the vision board workshop today at 1.30, right after the class with shelter. I would love to know how many people are coming so I can get, I'm going to go ahead and get a little poster board and things like that. I've got four boxes of brand new magazines. So um, there's going to be a lot to choose from. So please just text me, email me if you're going to be there or, or put it in the WhatsApp chat. And Kathy, we can't thank you enough. We'll see you tomorrow talking about the Smart Edge loans. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. See some of y'all later.